I also wanted to mention, uh, we have a mutual friend in John Mulaney. Oh yeah. Who yeah. I'm adore. I just adore. I think he's a, a brilliant, uh, brilliant mind and, uh, just thrilled to know him. How did you and John Mulaney come to be friendly? Through, uh, the, through the director of Here Lies Love, Alex mm -hmm. Timbers. He's a theater director. And he directed a thing that John Mulaney and Nick Hole did called Oh, Oh, Hello. Oh, yeah. I've seen that show. I love that show. Yeah. He directed that and said, David, they'd like to sometimes invite someone up on stage. Mm -hmm. Will you, will you let them do that? I said, Oh, sure. Uh, so I did, I was one of the kind of ringers in the yes. audience that they bring up and they, you become part of one of the, was uh, it the tuna sandwich? Yeah. The tuna sandwich thing. <laughs> and, uh, they do that. And of course they're all in like, uh, wigs and prosthetics, prosthetics and, yeah. and all kinds of stuff. So I have to say that I, I got a little confused. Uh, I, <laughs> I thought, who, who's. Which one's John? Which one is Nick? <laughs> which one's Nick? Which is John? Yes. No, it was a surreal moment of my life too, which is a really, I mean, it's a very, it was a really funny show. Those are both brilliant guys. And then the same thing, they heard I was in town. They said, would you come and be the, the, uh, the stooge that sits in the audience and gets called up? So I got called up and it all, they're both were dressed as the, these old men that are obsessed with Steely Dan and live on the Upper West Side, and it is the most specific kind of comedy. And then, of course, it all there's this bit that they want you to participate in, where they lure you into mentioning this tuna sandwich, and wouldn't you like some of this tuna sandwich? <laughs> and I, it is one of those moments in my life anyway. And there've been many. I'm sure there've been many in yours where I leave my body and I observe what's happening. And I, there's part of me that thinks, you have a very odd life at this moment, Conan. You're up on stage, it's Mulaney Kroll. <laughs> they keep referencing Steely Dan and they're trying you to mention tuna fish sandwich. And uh, we're at a Broadway theater. I don't understand what's happened to my life. So I'm, it sounds like you had this similar experience. I had a very similar experience, yes. This giant tuna sandwich comes down and it, uh, <laughs> appears and really the whole stage smells like tuna fish it really does <laughs> i smelled like tuna fish for days afterwards they, they wouldn't let me fly commercially for a while uh i just i, I don't I'm, I'm i like that you're good friends with john because i'm obsessed with whatever this line is between comedy and music i know that there's some kind of visceral connection between the two i've always been in comedy but fascinated with music and um tried to play music and been frustrated and always thought the grass was always greener. The last kind of show I did, I wasn't exactly stand up, but there were quite a number of parts on the, in the show where I would just talk directly to the audience. Right. Kind of like a comedian would do. And sometimes I got laughs. Mm -hmm. And so I got a little, little tiny taste of that. I loved it, but it was terrifying. Yeah. As a musician, you have this, whole group of musicians and you have the song and everything that just the kind of structure is it's there. a structure once you get on that roller coaster structure or whatever you want to call it boom you're you're supported right you just ride it right whereas if you're just standing there if and and you're trying to make people laugh or pay attention at least if they don't it's like whoa we're, we're in trouble now yeah yeah <laughs> I'm always, I mean, I do think there is a connection in that uh, I had to do something today and got up in front of this crowd and I could tell it was tight. And I always think what time has taught me is be patient and find the rhythm of the room. Mm -hmm. Like let's find the rhythm of what's happening in this room. And then I can work with that. And I imagine that it's somewhat similar in music where you need to, where are these people now that we're playing for? And how do we connect with them? So when you find the rhythm of the room in that way, do you then go, oh, I'm, I have to completely change what I was going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to jump and do this other thing. Well, I, a big, I, I love mistakes. It's just joyous. I mean, I, I grew up watching Johnny Carson tell a joke that would bomb on the Tonight Show. And I would see his eyes kind of, <laughs> Glim, there's gleam in his eye and then he would have um, I mean there's a f 
there was one segment I really loved where he told a few jokes in a row that didn't work out well. And then he reached up and there was a, a microphone hanging above his head that was catching. He wasn't loved. He was, was done with the boom. And he grabbed the boom and pulled down and said, um, is this thing on? Is this working? And then said, uh, Walmart, clean up in aisle five into the microphone. And he was basically just calling out the fact that his routine was not going at all well that night and having fun with it. And I thought, that's the monologue I remember. He, he probably got a huge laugh. Huge. I have a question. My, uh, I have a friend who often tells me, David, don't laugh at your own jokes. Mm -hmm. And I've tried to stick to that, but sometimes I can't help it. Um, it'll tickle me and I'll just start la giggling mm -hmm. at my own jokes. Now, sometimes I find like if I'm in front of an audience, they love that because it, it, whatever breaks the fourth wall sure. or whatever, yeah. And, yeah. and they go, they're in on it. Yeah. Uh, other times, it's like he's just having fun by himself. He's we're not included here. I'm. I disagree with your friend violently. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> if he were here, I would fight this person. Like I, I don't. Um, I sometimes. I, if I'm laughing at my own joke, I'm the only one laughing. Yes. But at least there's someone there enjoying it. And I, I <laughs> so I, uh, uh, and, and people around me will say, oh, Conan, you're cracking yourself up there. And I, but I'll say, yes, I am. And I'm, I'm only on this earth for a little time. And I'm delighted with myself at this moment. And I, I don't care that none of you are. Um, I want to make sure that I, let you go on time because uh, I know you've got, you are an important man with places to be. Um, Thank but you. this has been a real uh, joy. It's been a joy and an honor. I wanna make sure I get the word out that uh, Here Lies Love premieres July 20th. We're in previews before that. Right. Where we're, that means we're still getting some bugs out of it, mm -hmm. but it's, it's the full show. And um, on the night in which I come, I will show up late. The show will stop. A spotlight will hit me. And I will uh, slowly walk to where I'm going to be seated, standing. And, um, and then the show resumes. That's right. And we'll have some shoes for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, David Byrne, this is like uh, my dream come true. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. It was yeah, fun talk. This it was is a lot cool. Of fun. Thank you.